Hello fellow RC enthusiasts, it's your host Tom Cogswell from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC here to answer a question that I often get, and that is, what's the difference between a Spectrum smart battery and a Brand X dumb battery? And do I have to have a Spectrum smart battery to use it with other Spectrum smart products? In this video, we're going to explain how a Spectrum smart LiPo is interchangeable with non-smart products and vice versa. So you can use your, your dumb battery with a Spectrum smart ESC, your charger and vice versa. I'll show you exactly what that means and what entails and what data you get with or without. So let's jump down to the bench so we can have a better, more intimate look at the kind of data that you get from your smart chargers, your smart ready transmitters, and with your smart ESCs. Okay, so I'm down here at the table, and these are my hands. Hello! And we're gonna just go through uh, what you see using a non-smart battery and a smart battery with, first off, our smart checker and or the smart charger, like our S1500 we have here. Let's go ahead and plug in a a dumb battery. So we've got our dumb battery and we'll plug it into our smart checker just to show you guys that you don't need to have a smart battery to use a smart checker. And you'll see we've got battery voltage right there and no uh, no volt cell voltages because our balance connector is not plugged in. We can either plug in our balance connector right now and then we'll get the percentage of the pack remaining because it knows it's a four cell and we'll get our cell voltages there. You can also still use the USB charge. You can still use the servo testers and things like that. And you can still use it as a balancer. That's cool. When you plug in a smart battery, so we'll go ahead and grab our 2200 smart pack. All you need to do is just plug in the main connector, give it a second, and we have all of our smart battery data. We've got the percentage remaining. We've all even got the temperature of the pack. If you scroll down, You'll see all the data on the battery, what type of battery it is, the C rating, number of cycles on the pack, things like that. All these other guys stand for over number of times it's been over temped, number of times it's been overcharged, and number of times it's been over discharged. You want to change any settings on the smart battery. So this is a pretty much stock battery. You can change what our charge rate is charge voltage, you can't go above 4.2 because we're trying to keep it safe here, kids. And you can change what the storage voltage is. So this is one of my favorite things about smart batteries is that there is an auto storage mode. You see there at the top there, we can make it so that this smart battery, and this is all Spectrum smart batteries, have a built-in auto storage mode. We can tap this and change that to whatever we want it to, between 12 hours and 240 hours. So if I change, set this to 12 hours, in 12 hours, if there's been no change in status on the pack, the battery will start discharging on its own. So you don't have to have it plugged into a checker or into a charger, battery just sitting here, right here on this table. After 12 hours, it will discharge to the 3.8 volts that I had it set on here. You can also do that with your smart chargers. So if we plug in, a power source. I can actually just plug in a battery to power this on because it is DC. Our charger will power up. And with a dumb battery, you just set it up like you would any other charger. With a smart battery, you just plug it into the output, give it a moment, and it recognizes what type of battery it is. We'll scroll through. It knows that it is a three cell, 2200 battery. It's internal volt or internal temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It knows all the other stuff that we saw with our smart checker. So with this info, you don't have to do the guessing work the uh, in the hassle of saying, okay, it's a 2200 milliamp pack. I can charge it at 3C. That means I can charge it at 6.6 .6 amps, blah, 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 blah. It just does that all for you, making it a lot safer and a lot easier to charge your LiPos. So let's move on to what happens if we need to charge a dumb battery. Like I was saying, your smart chargers are backwards compatible with dumb batteries and vice versa. Your dumb charger or your legacy, like a, a Dynamite or Brand X charger will charge a smart battery, no problem. Your smart batteries will even record the number of times that it's been charged 
on that charger. So if you've got a new pack and you're going to charge it with your dynamite charger and uh, you, you want to know how many cycles it is, don't be concerned with that because it'll know that you've charged it and discharged it on your non-smart charger. So no worries having to use it like on your friend's charger that isn't smart or anything like that. It will work as a normal battery and it will record that info as if it was on a smart charger. So we've got uh, our charger plugged in. We'll plug in our dumb battery. Okay, see, we got voltage, but it doesn't know what the cell voltage is because we don't have the balance connector. And in this case, always plug in your balance connector if you're using a dumb battery. And this is a 3200 four cell. So just like anything else, make sure that you have it set to 4S and our charge current is appropriate for the battery. I'll just set it to 3.2 and hit charge. You can also do discharge and storage with this charger. And if we needed to, we can change it to these different battery types. Like I said, with your smart charger and your smart batteries, it will set all of these things for you. No hassle involved when charging your smart batteries with your smart charger. Cool. I think, I think that's all we can cover with smart chargers when we're talking about smart versus non-smart batteries. All right, let's move on to ESCs. Okay. First off, let's talk about Firma ESCs. These guys right here. The Firma ESC is what we have for Surface, i.e. Firma. Surface ESCs, we have them in 130, 150, and 160 amps. Uh, the 160 is up to 8S, and these two, this one's 4S, and this one's up to 6S. This guy can run two batteries. What's really cool about this one is if you have two batteries plugged into it, it will actually display on your radio the two batteries at once. I've already got one installed into my SCX-10 2 rig right here that I've been putting together. And I'm using a 2S Smart LiPo. So we'll plug it in, turn on my 5R, which I have updated for smart compatibility. So these guys don't come out of the box ready to go for smart compatibility. You do have to update them. We'll have a video for that in the description below. I'll turn her on. We've got our SCX-10 plugged in. Turn on my Firma ESC. I've got an SR515 receiver right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. That has also been updated for smart compatibility with a smart battery you're gonna get these screens. I'll try to be best as I can here. You're automatically gonna see smart at the top. And if we scroll down, this will be the first smart screen you'll see. We have our battery bar at the top. So that's kind of our battery level. If it was at 8.4, it would be fully charged. We've got motor current. So if I pick up my, my rig and I pull the throttle, you'll we'll see I'll get some motor current there. See, that's pretty cool. FET temperature, that is the ESC's temperature itself. And then RPM, that is the RPM of the motor. Very good. Next up is battery info. All the battery's info is going to be here. The percentage of the battery left, like we saw on this screen, about 90%. So we scroll down, 90% of the battery's left. The actual temperature of the battery itself that's one really cool spec that you're gonna get if you're running a smart battery. And you'll also get the imbalance of the cells and how much of the battery has been consumed. And these screens, they could change over time. This is the most recent firmware that we've been testing. So it works really well. If we feel like we need to change something up a little bit, we will, and it'll be in the change log. All right, let's move on. Ah, so here's pack one, like I was talking about. Pack one, if you can see that at the very top there, that, well, this one's only got one pack, but if we were running an ESC with two battery inputs, we would have a pack two screen. Really cool. Then we've got the cell voltages, so both cells are pretty well in balance. 4.06, we can see that. And then the number, number of cycles on the pack, as well as the temperature below. Cell-wise, this could be filled up, just depending on how big the battery is. We left plenty of space. And then we have ESC status. That's also the RPM, motor output, your throttles output. So if we pull it a little bit, you'll see I'm about 10%, throttle put, temp. And if our ESC, unfortunately this one's not reporting it, 
and reported BEC temperature and amperage and voltage, it would also be there. Normally, the, only the higher end DSCs will be, will be uh, showing that uh, info, so we'll see that later on the 100 amp ESC with the DX8 here coming up next. Lastly, you'll have a min and max screen. So minimum on the left, so that's my minimum voltage that we reached, and that was the maximum. That's the speed. So if we had it set up for speed, which this one is, my, I win eight miles per hour, woohoo! And on amperage, we'll see what our maximum amperage is, 4.6, and then what our battery temperature was, min and max of that. And that is everything you will get. So let's plug in a non-smart battery and see what we get. Okay, so I plugged in a 4S. Ah, so you'll see that we don't have smart at the top because we don't have a full smart system. But we still have a smart ESC. It's still going to report some data, but not all of it. The data we will get is the input voltage. So you can still set alarms for your battery voltage. You'll just have to set it for a 4S or whatever you have in there. You'll still get the motor's output current. You'll still get the FET temperature of the ESC, so the ESC's temperature, and you'll still get RPM off the ESC. No extra modules included, that's all straight from the ESC. But you won't get battery info, obviously, because we don't have a smart battery plugged in. But you still will get your ESC status data, that's good. So all that stuff here, RPM, volts, motor, blah, 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 all good. And you'll still get your min and maxes, and this one is our actual FET temperature from the ESC. And if we get to this screen, our min and max screen, one little thing that I like to show off is that if you have run but you didn't change your pack or you didn't change models or turn off your radio, you say, woo, woo, okay. So we've got our min and maxes calculated there. If, and I hope you guys can see it as well, da, da, da. if I hit the clear button, all those will zero out and reset. So that's how you reset your telemetry data real quick with the touch of a button to be able to, you know, like if you're doing speed runs and you wanna get the miles per hour on each speed run, you hit the clear button and you can get each one. Good stuff. Let's look at a air setup. We're gonna be using this DX8 and the smart telemetry and battery telemetry passed to your radio will be applicable for every IX radio, so the IX12, and then the DX8, the DX9, and that continues down to the DX6E. Pretty much any of our Gen 2 models, even the original DX18 without voice, will show these same screens that I'm about to show you. So let's go ahead and get our 100 amp plugged in. Once you plug in a smart battery and it knows that it's not a fully charged pack, you're gonna get a warning on your radio, and this includes the IX12 radios, that will say, hey, your battery's not fully charged. You probably don't wanna fly. That's okay though. We're just gonna hit clear and ignore that. Okay, so we're all bound up. One of the great things about smart ESCs and smart receivers is it's gonna tell your radio, hey, automatically, this, there's a smart setup here. Let's go ahead and configure the, uh, the telemetry for it. So when we scroll over, the first important screen that we're gonna go to is just like on the surface stuff, a, a screen that's kind of a general overview of everything that's going on. So we've got RPM at the top there. We've got volts. We've got motor current, so that's the output current. And if I throttle up, we'll see a little bit more, right? There's no prop or anything on this, so there's not much current going through it. We'll have our throttle percentage. That's kind of your stick position. The FET temperature is the actual temperature of the ESC. And then the BEC temperature. And the BEC's voltage right there. That's pretty good. And like I said with the uh, with the DX5 Pro, there we, we could change things up here a little bit. This is still a pr preliminary firmware, so the things that you see here may not be what you get, especially if you see this like a couple years from now and it's on YouTube, you may not see the exact same data that we're seeing here. Just go ahead and update your radio. In general, it should be pretty easy to understand and synonymous. Next thing is the battery info. So all the battery's info are voltage of the battery, the temperature of the pack, the battery percentage remaining, 70%, and the current. So if we throttle up, we'll get a little bit of current. You gotta get a little higher there. The imbalance of the cell, so it's 11 millivolts out of imbalance. 
It's the number of cycles on the pack. So I've had nine cycles on this battery. Again, one of my favorite features. I used to just have to count and put little hashtags or hash, hash marks on my batteries to count how many cycles have been on them to you know, know that you know, if it's got 50 cycles on it, it's probably getting kind of old. Just have to plug it in, you'll see how many. And then the next screen is gonna be battery one. Since we've only got one battery plugged into here, it will show just battery one and the voltage of each cell on battery one. And then we'll go back to the min-max screen. So the min-max screen is our minimums and our maximums that were presented during this session. So the maximums of voltage and amperage and all that good stuff, the temperature is all there. If we hit the clear button, just like with the 5R, it will reset everything. We'll even get our alarms back again. That's fine, thanks. So let's go ahead and plug in a dumb battery and see what kind of data we get from our smart ESC that way. So this is a six cell that we just plugged in. All right, we'll go up to here. So just like the last time, we'll start from the beginning. We've got our monitor, flight log data, we'll have our regular min-max, and then ES, smart ESC in min-max. So we're gonna go to the next screen. Ah, so one big difference is you're not gonna have a battery bar because it has no idea how charged this pack is because it's not getting that battery data. We'll also have RPM, we'll still get that. We'll still have pack voltage or the input voltage of the ESC because it knows how much is going into the ESC. It just doesn't know what type of battery it is. Just like with the 5 Pro, we're not gonna get any battery info because we're using a dumb battery. But you can still set alarms using the voltages here. Like I'll show you here. We'll go down to telemetry. And if we're gonna use ESC, you can still set a volts minimum alarm. Turn on those alarms if you like. So you can still get a general, if your battery's about to die, uh, volts minimum alarm using a dumb battery on your smart ESC. Okay. All right, fellow RC enthusiasts, hopefully this video helped you understand and get better educated on how Spectrum Smart Technology can make your RC lifestyle so much more easier. Really just great stuff with chargers and ESCs. But also, ho I hope this video helped you understand how they are backward compatible. You don't have to have a smart battery for a smart charger, and you don't have to have a smart battery for a smart ESC. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them below. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and get smart, everybody.